Hello there. This morning I want to talk about a misunderstanding that I've become aware of uh, in the way that people look at the life of the Buddha. Now it's all it's very well known that the Buddha became enlightened after a great effort um, while sitting under the Bodhi tree and it was a very intense experience where all his past lives came and different states unfolded and finally became enlightened. In the second week after his enlightenment it is said that he got up and he went a certain distance, 30 yards or so, from the Bodhi tree and sat down. And it is said that he sat down and he gazed without blinking, without blinking, for a further week at the Bodhi tree. Now if you go to Bodh Gaya, where the Bodhi tree is in India, in Bihar in India, what you'll find is the Bodhi tree or the relative of the Bodhi tree and then a certain distance away you'll find a plaque and this plaque will say here sat the Buddha in the second week after his enlightenment gazing at the Bodhi tree. Now what was he doing? What was he doing gazing at the Bodhi tree in the second week after his enlightenment? Normally if you ask a Buddhist that they will refer you to some scripture where it says, oh, he sat there admiring the tree. Admiring the tree. Well, I don't believe that. I don't think that's actually what he was doing at all. Remember, he'd just become enlightened. It wasn't, he knew full well that it wasn't the tree that enlightened him. And the beauty and the luminous perception that he was now having as an enlightened being made him see everything as equally beautiful. It wasn't even if a spirit had come out of the tree and the, the, the tree had taken the form of a spirit that then came and did something to him, he knew full well that it wasn't that that enlightened him either. It was a myriad an infinity of causes and conditions that finally came together wonderfully to enlighten him. He would have known that because he was enlightened, all-knowing at that point. So what was he doing? Now what I suggest is this. It's like, it's all about whether reality arrives or whether it's already here. And I think it's already here. But we don't see it because we live in tiny moments and the moments begin and end with thinking and with blinking. If you stop thinking, if you stare and don't blink, what starts to happen? If you want to know what the Buddha was doing for a week staring at this tree after his enlightenment, then what I suggest you do is just for 10 minutes do exactly what he did. Stare at a tree without blinking. What will happen? It's amazing what happens. When he got enlightened, he experienced that within himself. But when he stared at the tree, and if you stare at the tree without blinking, you will find that firstly your mind becomes quiet because you're taking your attention out of your thoughts and consciously using it, your mind will become quiet and then what is within and without 
which appears to be a duality, what is within me and what is outside of me. These appear to be two things. They're not two things. And this final dualism is reconciled when we focus with our eyes open without blinking. The inner and the outer become one. The second stage, when you do this, you'll notice quite soon after you have an unbroken focus, you'll notice that your breathing releases. It just drops and you start feeling your attention shifting out of your head into the heart area. So then you keep your eyes still. You don't move them about. And what then happens is you will notice that even after 30 seconds to a minute, there seems to be a luminescence emerging. You're, you start to perceive a luminescence, which is not more concentrated in one place than another, but seems to be everywhere. And as you remain in that focus, your perception of the outer world, so-called, becomes brighter and brighter and brighter, and the peace that the tree is in and that the sky is full of and that the ground is made of becomes more and more self-evident. When the Buddha got up from the Bodhi tree and sat down and looked at it, he was not admiring the tree. He was opening the biggest moment ever. You will find that when you try and open a moment, you're lucky if you can have unbroken concentration, unbroken by blinking, unbroken by thinking, unbroken by movement, for more than a very short period of time. But the Buddha, who was the most accomplished of all, managed to open a moment that lasted several days and nights. The more, the longer the moment is opened, the greater the revelation of reality. What actually is already here. You just have to look and see it. So what he did after getting enlightened was he opened the most enormous moment ever. Which completely brought him fully present. And one with what is. And this is something that's actually, the technique of it is very simple. So really try this. Just stare without moving. And notice what immediately starts to occur. You come into presence. You start to recognize what is there in every single moment. And this presence will be exactly the same in 10 minutes. It'll be exactly the same two minutes before we die. And you tell me, will it be the same two minutes after we've died? This presence that comes when we stop thinking, stop blinking, stop moving, when we become still, the knowledge that comes has much to tell us. This is wisdom beyond the intellectual realm, beyond the realm of concept, beyond the realm of words, where the experience itself of this pure luminous presence turns out to be the finest wisdom of all.